episode 26 of Strange Brow Radio. I'm your host, Tobe Johnson, and I'm dog-tired. I'm editing this together, freshly back from the marathon of Secrets of the Sasquatch in Cottage Grove, Oregon. It was a little bit like being shot out of a cannon over Bigfoot country. Seven speakers for three and a half hours, maybe four hours in a packed house. It was a lot of fun, but a lot of work, and I look forward to doing more such work in the future, and I'll tell you about that at the end of the show. First, our sponsor, Feral by Aaron, Etsy.com. Go check it out. Drums, rattles, and smudge sticks. Native American shaman inspired up here in the Olympic Peninsula. There's nobody else doing it like Feral by Aaron, and we're happy, oh so happy to have her as a sponsor. And Feral by Aaron inspired me to make a Bigfoot drum, and I sold it. I actually sold the darn thing. It had Sasquatch hair infused into it, so gosh, how could you not? By the drum. Feral by Aaron, thank you. Today, guest Joe Hauser, the Montana Vortex. I'll tell you more about him in a moment. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Joe Hauser, the Montana Vortex, was one of six other people to join us for our Secrets of the Sasquatch at the Axe and Fiddle for our live events in Cottage Grove, Oregon yesterday. He did 300, I think he took 300 people through the Montana Vortex yesterday, all by himself. And then he hopped on and did one heck of a presentation for a crowd of about 65 or 70, I think is what we could have fit inside this pub. It was an amazing moment and there was a video involved. And I think it's only been shown maybe a handful of times and we showed it there. And he's going to talk about... uh, his experience at the Montana Vortex involving some of these secrets that the Sasquatch have. And they do have secrets. And Joe, I think, knows a couple of them now because he asked him. I don't want to spoil it all for you. Let's just hear it from Joe Hauser from the Secrets of the Sasquatch. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me, Toby. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I just... Toby uh, said we live in a house on the Flathead River. Actually, we live on a vortex field. It's one of nine known electromagnetic energy fields in the country. It's a measurable energy, kind of like Sedona on steroids. And it's probably one of the most paranormal places in North America. And I just finished giving about 300 people tours at the Vortex today. And we had several different things happen that are paranormal in nature. But one of the big things here is we do have a lot of Bigfoot activity. And like Toby said, I've been involved doing Bigfoot stuff for a long time since my first encounter in the Sierras. And I, I didn't get a chance to listen to Ron's presentation, but I think Ron and I are pretty much on the same wavelength and era too, in that these are energy beings. We ourselves are energy beings. And that's one of the things we teach here at the Vortex. I have a nice little thing here. I'm going to hold it up. I don't know. You guys see that? It's called an energy stick. And when I let go of it, it uh, stops ringing. I mean, or beeping as soon as I put my hand on it. And that's just using my own energy or my own or energy field. Well, everything in the universe boils down to ener- energy. <clears throat> and like Eris said, it's also frequency. We're vibrating at a frequency that keeps us on the third dimension. And what's to say we can't raise our vibrations or lower them and enter into other dimensions? So basically, everything is energy. Everything boils down to quantum physics. The definition of the quantum is a packet of energy. So we're all packets of energy in a great big packet of energy called the Earth's electromagnetic field. So really, we're quantum beings in a quantum field. Having said that, my experiences with Benfoot, I never really formed an opinion over the years. I felt they were flesh and blood because people were finding tracks and they were <clears throat> seeing them and hearing them and stuff like that. But I also felt there was something else going on when people were finding a single track out in the field or a double track. And how could that get there unless they had some other abilities that go beyond what we have? Over the years, uh, based on my experiences here at the Vortex 
and other places, I've come to believe that they are not only spiritual beings, but they're interdimensional beings, and they have abilities that go far beyond the abilities that we have. They can morph or transform uh, between an orb-like uh, light being into a physical being, and then they can go back into that orb. For years, I've studied orbs, and it took me a long time to finally decide that, yeah, the Bigfoot were orbs, and that were based on some experiences I had last year, which I have some videos of we're going to share a little bit later on. But under the premise that everything is energy, we have a, we're vibrating in a frequency, they're vibrating in a frequency, we have an electromagnetic field, they do too. And what's to say that their field isn't stronger than ours? As they walk around, uh, maybe they're like a boat going through water, and they are just creating a wake as they go through the field, which creates a blurry photos and stuff like that. The Blackfeet, who I deal with over the years a lot, which is the nearest tribe, or the Blackfoot, they call them Mistaki Tapi. They mean, that means large mountain spirit. The Blackfeet up in Canada, and I've interviewed several elders there, they call them Oki Dapi, or, uh, which means whole being or original human being. They also believe that they're spiritual beings, that they're interdimensional, and they have one foot in this world and one foot in the spiritual world. But on beyond that, they believe they're protectors and healers. And most uh, native tribes across the United States, there's a lot, of, a lot of different tribes that believe that too. And I've come to believe that, uh, that you can call on them for healings. So I've seen that happen in uh, sweat lodges where the Blackfoot elder has sang songs and called the Bigfoot in. I have a prayer that was taught to me by a Blackfoot healer, and it, it's actually uh, a Blackfoot prayer to the ancient beings or to Sasquatch, Mistaki Tapi. Mistaki Tapi, Ayo Kanatani Kimak Dokiman, Ayo Spunani Kimak Dokiman, Iyo Kanatani Kimak Dokiman, Mistaki Tapi, Oki Tapi. Basically, what I said is I asked the Bigfoot or the Sasquatch to come in and protect us and heal us and guide us as we travel through this journey. <clears throat> A few years ago, it, it took me from the time I had my first experience in the Sarahs, it took me 22 years until I saw my first Bigfoot. And I had to move from California to uh, Montana. And one day late in the evening at Avalanche Lake and Glacier National Park, my son and I and a couple other people saw two Bigfoot walking across a snowfield across the lake. Uh, we didn't have cameras to take photos, um, and unfortunately, we didn't get a photo, but we did have about a five-minute experience, and they were large. One of them was about 10 foot tall. The other one was uh, probably about six, seven foot tall, and they were breaking through big snow drifts, had long arms, and it was, uh, to me, it showed me right there that they definitely had a physical presence. Then it took me <clears throat> approximately 16 year, more years until I had my, my next Bigfoot experience. Or not my next experience, we have them all the time here. They knock on the house, they come in the house, they move things, they leave glyphs almost every single day, they move rocks. All, every kind of thing you can think of that happens with Bigfoot, we experience at least one or more things every day here at the Vortex. For years, they slap the back of the house about 14 foot off the ground. And when my wife Tammy first moved in eight years ago, she was into Bigfoot. I told her they slapped the house. Sure enough, the first night she was here, they slapped the house. And uh, sometimes they slap the house and they go, ha, 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 like they're laughing at us. Well, about a year of that went on, and one night they slapped the house, and Tammy raised up in bed. She didn't say it mean. She just said, stop slapping the house. It scares me. You're waking me up. If you wanted to let us know you're here, just knock nicely, four knocks. Very next night, four knocks on the house. Last night, twice we had four knocks on the house. And uh, <clears throat> they've been doing that now for uh, a number of years. In October of last year, I uh, had about 10 people on a tour at the Vortex and I was teaching people how to see their aura, play with their own energy field. And all summer long, based on the glyphs and all the things that was happening, I kept asking our resident Bigfoot here, by the way, his name is Raybo. I asked him, show yourself to me this year. 
Well, it was the last day that we were open, and I was about 50 foot away from the House of Mystery, and I saw this movement started coming up the trail, and I looked over there, and all of a sudden, this strawberry blonde head came up, and great big shoulders, no neck, and just kind of went down into some shoulders. The shoulders were about five foot wide. It was about seven foot tall. It was auburn in color. And it came right up the trail, walked down the railing, ducked its head down. Uh, the roof of the House of Mystery where the porch in the front is six foot eight tall. It had to duck its head way down to get in the roof. And I saw it go in the House of Mystery. We have suspected over the years that they go in there and they spend time in there because we suspect there's a portal in the center of the House of Mystery. So at any rate, I didn't run over there at that time. I finished the tour. I kept my eye on the house. I knew there was nobody else down there because it was just about the last tour of the season. So when I got done with the people about seven or eight minutes later, I ran to the house of mystery. I went in the opposite door. And when I came inside, we have a large weight. It weighs 13 pounds. It's a pendulum. We do, uh, ex we do demonstrations with it. The pendulum was seven foot up in the air, just holding up in the air on this chain. There was nothing in the house, but the pendulum was up in the air. And as soon as I made the corner and looked in the house, the pendulum dropped, swung across, bounced off of the wall. And then I heard two giant footsteps. Uh, each footstep was about seven, eight foot apart. And it was like a 800 pound person was walking across this wooden floor. Two big steps and it was out the door that it came in. Well, I ran over there really quick. There was nothing there. One so minute, one minute. Okay, basically what happened was this thing was cloaking. It was holding the weight up in the air. When it dropped the weight, uh, it swung across. And even though I couldn't see it, I saw it come in. I heard the footsteps as it left. And that was really something that I hadn't experienced before, but I suspected that they could cloak. And I think later on when you get to some videos that I have, you'll be able to see that they do have this ability. And a lot of times what we teach people every, every day, I teach people how to cloak their fingers every day in their own electromagnetic energy film. So that's basically my experiences. I've had tons of little things along the way. There's some kind of activity going on here all the time. And that's it. Thank you. All right. That was part one of Joe Hauser. And the reason that there is a time limit based upon these two different episodes, we'll call them, of Joe's talk is that we kind of broke it up into sections of 10 minutes for seven people, and then the second round was 15 minutes for seven people. So that was the 10 minutes, and the next one's more like the 20-minute follow-up from Joe. So first, I want to take a station identification break for our sponsor, Feral by Aaron. I want to thank our sponsor, Feral by Aaron yet again. Now, I've mentioned time time again on the show that Feral by Aaron is our one sponsor, but with a sponsor like this, you don't need any more because the fact is that these spirit tools actually work. And what do they work with? Well, they work with the elements of the earth, and they're housed and built by an artisan out of the Olympic Peninsula, Aaron Jackson. Check out Feral by Aaron, E-R-Y-N at Etsy.com. Drums, rattles, smudge sticks, and coming soon, alchemy boxes. These are one of a kind, each one one of a kind. We're not talking about a factory here. And as two people told me, her instruments sing, in particular the drums. So check out Feral by Aaron. Give a like, review, subscribe, share, go on the Instagram, and give a little love. May give it right back to you. Feral by Aaron at Etsy.com. First of all, I'd like to talk about some of the other things that people have said. For me, experiencing these beings is a personal journey. I never got into it to try to prove their existence. Uh, it was just I wanted to learn uh, as I went along and learn from them and just have a really personal journey. Like Kirk said, living on a power spot, and like Era said, I've lived on a power spot for 16 years. I wake up every single day, I go to bed every single night expecting something paranormal to happen. And it does happen, whether it's UFOs, uh, orbs, Sasquatch, 
uh, ectoplasma, all kinds of different things. So pretty soon you get into that mindset. And as you start expecting it to happen and you think about it, what we think is what we get. It draws it to us. I know I've never been a big fan of going out, finding Bigfoot and doing whatever. Obviously we go out in the woods, we camp a lot and it seems like we have experiences, but here they're just here. And, and like Kurt said, they're not, they not, may, may not be here every day. We've gone through a three week period where they've been very active. They've left glyphs, uh, they've whistled at the tourists that come through here, a lot of knocking on the house, different things like that. One of the things they do is they imitate us, our voices. They imitate Tammy really well. There's a place that I walk in the woods out behind here early in the morning before she's up. And when I get to this one spot, all of a sudden I'll hear Tammy's voice, Joe. Joe. And the first time it happened, I answered back, I go, yeah, oh, Tam, I'm out in the woods out here. What? I was only about 150 feet from the house. And she didn't answer. And I thought, well, there must be something wrong if she's up at 530 in the morning. So I went back to the house. She's still in bed. Well, every time I get into this one area, it, it's like a game. Joe. So they call me back and it's her voice perfectly. But we all and I can't say it's Bigfoot that's doing it or Sasquatch, but obviously something is mimicking our voices, and I feel they have the ability to do that. Over the years, 16 years of living in this vortex field, we've had different scientists that come in. We're all scientists ourselves to a certain degree, and we've done tons of different experiences, experiments. Uh, one of the things these vortexes are known as, as portals into other worlds or dimensions. The Blackfeet call it a place of no return. It's part of their oral history. At some point in time, somebody disappeared and never came back. So far, we haven't lost anybody in the 16 years I've been here. But after being here a couple of years, we were pretty much um, convinced that we had three areas on the property where there could be interdimensional portals based on what we've seen, what we've experienced, what we've measured. Over the years, we've tried different things to open those portals, uh, raising our frequency through meditation, stuff like that, uh, sound vibrations. And um, <clears throat> I agree with everybody, uh, that all the panel that said about meditation. Uh, the Taoists say that I could have a very ornate uh, porcelain base that's extremely beautiful with gold around it and stuff like that. But what makes it useful is the empty space inside. And when we meditate and we clear our mind, we open ourselves up to other possibilities. And I think that's one thing you need to do. You can't go in with all kinds of preconceived notions. You can't go in saying, I'm going to find Bigfoot or I'm going to track them. I'm going to put up cameras, all that type of stuff, because they know everything that we do. Uh, generally, I mean, they're listening right now. I keep asking the one we have here to come in and just stick his face behind me and show off here. But, and that might not be a possibility, but they're here all the time. So we experience it all the time. Last year, we started doing experiments trying to raise the energy level of the vortex. And any given day, it might be 800 to 3,000 milligauss of electromagnetic energy. Some days it's up to 12,000. So we uh, had a young scientist come in from Co or Puerto Rico. He brought a Tesla device in, something that we could raise the electromagnetic field. We raised it up to, through a series of experience over a few days, we raised the electromagnetic field on the ground to 44,440 milligauss of electromagnetic energy. When we took pictures of each other, all of us were out of phase. We'd be, we'd be over here, we'd be here, we'd be here. And a lot of, you could just feel the energy, a lot of strange things happen. One of the reasons why we wanted to raise the energy is we felt we could create a tipping point and possibly open a portal and have some sort of experiences in those portals. Myself and my, uh, another scientist here have actually had experiences in portals and uh, or going into the portals but we wanted more we wanted to be able to open them up well i can't say that we opened a portal at that time but after we did these experiments and we raised the energy of the vortex up as high as we did I, over the years i've filmed inside of the house a mystery uh, it's one of the things that's on the vortex grounds where we do demonstrations but i've never put a camera in there permanently 
Uh, Tammy and I talked it over. That's my wife. She did, she and I decided we put an infrared camera in the house of mystery because we suspected there was a portal in there. When I went down and I took the camera down, I didn't plug it in. I didn't connect it up. It's a wireless camera. And I told the Bigfoot, and I, like Kirk, I just, and, and Alyssa, I just talk to him uh, every day. I talk to him. I have conversations with him. I tell him what I'm doing, whatever else. So I put the camera in the house of mystery, and I said, look, I'm not going to plug it in. I'm putting a camera in here. I don't want you guys to think that we're trying to trick you in any way. I'm letting you know that the camera's here. If you want to be on camera, come on in. If you don't, find stay out of the his, house of mystery for the next week because this camera is going to be in here. The next day I went out, the camera was tossed out the back window. It was laying on the ground about 10 foot away uh, from where I had put it. And I went out and I got the camera and it kind of pissed me off because I said, look, you know, I respect you guys. I give you your space. I'm not always uh, messing with you or whatever. And you guys are not respecting us. I put the camera in there. I let you know it was going to be in there. All you have to do is stay out if you don't want to be, want to be filmed. I thought that was pretty fair. Uh, later, I put the camera back in. I still didn't plug it in. Later on, Tammy went down there. She told him the same thing, that we're not trying to trick him or anything like that. And then we started talking about it, and I decided, well, I'm going to go down there again. So I went down, and I just said, look, the camera's here. I'm going to plug it in right now. Uh, don't you think it's time that you showed the world what you really are if you – if you decide you want to come into the house, we're not really looking for you, but if you want to come in, just show the world what you really are. <clears throat> uh, uh, several days went by. We didn't have anything on the camera. And one night, Tammy was in the store doing inventory. I came in the house, and the infrared alarm on the monitor was going off. Tam or Toby, can you queue up that first uh, video? Yeah, so what we're going to do is I have to change modes here, and i got to share the screen. So now... Everyone's perspective, including yours, Joe, is going to change. So now everybody on screen should see my computer screen. All right, here we go. This is the footage here that you want me to have queued up. This is the orb footage. Let me make sure that you're on. I can, I, I can see it. Okay, I, I want to find you as well, though, so you can have a, a personal touch. Um, here we go. And... Let me get rid of this, pull this out. Sorry about this, folks. We'll pull that there. Okay. And yeah, all I see is you now. Here we go. We're back. Let me just double click. All right, here we go. And it's not going to show your image, so I'm just going to let you do the talk in here as we play it. And here it comes. Okay. Um... All right. You want me to hold the image there? Yeah, you can just go okay. hold, hold the image right there. That's good. All right. I came inside. I heard the infrared alarm going on on this little monitor. It's a cheap camera system that I bought at Harbor Freight. It was the only wireless one I could get that went 400 feet. So I stuck the camera in the House of Mystery. We had this monitor, and it, it could only set in one place in our office on a desk where we could actually get footage. It had it. Whenever something breaks the infrared or heat or motion, it sets off alarm. I walked in. I saw it going off. We had taken the SD card we had in there out to review what was going on, and I didn't put it back in. So right away, I grabbed my camera. I saw this orb right in the center. You can all see, see a round, almost like a blue halo around the edge. And uh, this is right in the center of the House of Mystery. I grabbed my camera. I was trying to balance it. I took a quick video. I think this is five seconds long. You can go ahead and run it through again, Toby. Okay. And uh, then I dropped the camera because I was at an awkward angle. It fell on the floor, and that was it. Uh, go ahead and key up the next video. All right. I, I did two one-minute videos after that, and there was some activity in the house. And then on the third video, you can see uh, over to the left, you have some sort of... Uh, white being moving across right there and it fills up the whole screen you can see it has a very large blue aura and then all of a sudden it just morphs up uh, into some sort of energy or spiritual being <clears throat> this is going to go on for about a minute and 34 seconds uh, the reason why the camera is moving is because I'm on my knees trying to hold my cell phone steady to keep this going. 
To me, it's a big object. Uh, it's also whited out by the infrared light. Later on, I went in and I wore different colored clothes to see which ones would white out. Anything with red, tan, uh, or auburn color completely whites out. We know that Rabo, our Bigfoot here, the bigger Bigfoot, uh, he's auburn red in color. Uh, and I've seen that, and other people have seen him when he was smaller, probably about 10 years old. I'd say he's about 25 years old now. Um, we're getting up. What you're going to see is what I think it, right now. It's right after here. He got. He stood right in front of it. And now it's coming back into focus or back into range. And you'll see him come kind of from the center right there. And he kind of looks around, looks back behind us. And then uh, you'll see him morph up again into some sort of energy being. There's another one that's kind of sticking its head in the side over here with a great big shoulder on it. <clears throat> You can almost see like an arm or a leg there. And that's pretty much all of that video, Toby. If you want to run it back through really quickly, if you can just back it up to a minute and 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, all right, we can bring it to, you want to go to after we see your reflection kind of Yeah, deal? right after we see my reflection, well, we'll just run, that there would be go. like back to a minute and 34. Go backwards, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right about in there. That should be good, I think. I think we may have went by it. Just go ahead and back it up a little bit more. Okay, I'm going right to go to That's a minute. That's good. Well, baby, yeah, there it is right there. <clears throat> okay, what I think is he stepped in front of the, the wireless feed and he caused it to go out of service there. You can see me holding my cell phone video in it. And then he comes back in right there and moves around. Kind of looks back, you can see his aura, he's leaving an imprint there. And then just morphs up and away. Um, <clears throat> we have 18 videos over the next couple of days of uh, this being in the house of mystery. Can I say for sure that it's a Bigfoot? Well. I think it is just based on the head structure. Did Toby, did you get any of the, the still images or anything? No, uh, I concentrated on what we could get in the short amount of time. So we, we have these. Okay. When we go through frame by frame and we break it down to still images, you see a, 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 a conical shaped head uh, goes right down onto the neck um, <clears throat> and then great big, huge shoulders. And then as it moves around. What's really interesting, though, is back in that two summers ago, I had a guide working for me uh, who was very psychic. And every day he'd say, there's these white beings out here that kind of look like uh, the, the Michelin man or something like that. And there's 12 of them. And they move around the vortex grounds. There it is right there. If you could stop it right there somewhere. There you go. Maybe just run it back just a hair. Maybe I can scrub it, I'll try. Let's see. All right. Anyway, he said these beings are standing out there all the time. And he had the feeling that they were Bigfoot and occasionally they would give him messages. Now, if I go inside of the House of Mystery, and like I said, we did experiments. We don't have time, obviously, to throw all the videos on here. But if I walked in there with anything that was auburn, red, or tan in color, I totally white it out. If you wore blue or some other color, uh, then you showed up with some sort of coloration and pattern and stuff. So I can only assume that this is Ray Bow. We know he is auburn in color, and he totally whites out. The blue around him is a large aura. We have an aura or energy field. I believe theirs is much stronger than ours. And to me, this is a good example that if, in fact, the first orb we saw <clears throat> might have been a Bigfoot, I did two one-minute shots after that that there was nothing in there except the portal-looking round thing. And then this was the third one, and it's two minutes and 10 seconds long. Um, over a period of time of the other 18 videos over the next couple of days, we have several of them that appear to morph in an orb and then come back into a spiritual being. 
to me, this is uh, this is what they are. And when I went in and asked them, what, don't you think it's time to show the world what you really are? I think this is what we got. And over a period of the winter time, we weren't here, but I left the camera in the house and we were in Arizona, but we had a feed through, uh, through our phones. And there were several times that they went back in the house, uh, or at least one of them went back in the house, walked around, uh, did things like it's doing right there. I'll leave it up to you to decide if you think it's a Bigfoot or not. But to me, uh, it is. I think they are orbs or large energy fields. They morph into a flesh and blood uh, being, and then they have the ability to morph back out again. Things kind of fall into place with the psychic that was here saying he was seeing 12 uh, Michelin type creatures out there. Uh, I think that kind of goes along and that's what he was seeing. A few years ago, we had a, uh, I, I found a dead deer carcass on the road, pulled it over in the bushes, put a game camera on it, not for Bigfoot, but to see if we could catch any bears or eagles. Well, we had like four or five bears that show up. And then one day, uh, something, uh, you can see this, not fur, but hair on what appears to be maybe some hands that's just twisting the uh, game camera around. And right across of it, same sort of silhouette as this is uh, a head, shoulders, and a body, and it was probably about 10 foot tall, and it's standing on the opposite side of the deer carcass, and then it just just flows right through uh, the whole the video, and that was the first time we captured anything like this. Since then, we've even captured some more videos. I don't, I, I guess we're not, whatever it is, we're not ticking them off. They seem to want to get their video taken and they're not here every day. Uh, we take the camera out. It's not in there right now. We did have a, a tourist take a photo in there the other day of her husband. And we know Raybo likes to go in and stand in one spot of the house of mystery. And Tammy got two photos of him last year. You can see his whole outline. He's red. You can see the fur. A couple of days ago, a tourist came running out. She goes, look at this giant arm. And she had an arm that was probably six, seven foot long, six foot long, really big and muscular. It was all hairy. You can see part of the fingers. And it was standing right next to her husband, just an arm. And then I zoomed in and I could see part of an ankle or a foot down below. So that's what we're dealing with here. I can't honestly say that they are Sasquatch or Bigfoot, but I believe they are. And I think if you take everything into account that everybody else is saying here about the paranormal activity, everything that we've all been experiencing in the, in the field for years, that this is, this is what it is. I mean, these, these beings have abilities that go, like Ron said, go far beyond our abilities and we're, we haven't evolved to the level that they're at yet. They may not use cell phones. They may not can use computers, but they're definitely something that um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I feel very good that I've had the chance to associate with them and that they're here. And we really haven't put any boundaries on them other than occasionally they tick Tammy off and she tells them to stop doing stuff or don't do this or that. But um, they're here every day and we live with them not every day because they'll come for 30 days or 40 days they'll be really active and then they go somewhere else i think they're interdimensional i think that's a perfect reason why we find one or two footprints and then all of a sudden there's no more footprints they've moved back into the spiritual realm and i think this is what we're dealing with i don't think we'll ever where there are scientists would look at this, and I've showed a couple people with some pretty good science credentials, they are just totally amazed. But nobody wants to go back and talk to their head of their department and say, uh, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go investigate these creatures at the Montana Vortex and House of Mystery. But they are here. I haven't had a chance to see what Christopher has shot or any of his type of videos. So I don't know what else to say. If anybody has any questions, if I have any time left, I'll be glad to take a couple questions. And that was Joe Hauser of the Montana Vortex once again. Now the video he's alluding to throughout this, as I said, has only been shown maybe three times, four times max that I know of. And this is one of those times. It's a copywritten video and someday, some way it'll be out there. Um, 
you got to go to a conference, in other words, to see this. So if I ever release this video, which I am, and that's what's going to come out of my mouth next is how that will look. That will be for Patreons, members of Strange Brow Radio. Yes, the days come. Exclusive content coming your way this year. Also, not only extra podcasts, but video. So you'll be able to log in with your Patreon and membership and view such videos and extra content. And this will be one of those things that you can do. And I'll tell you more about that real soon. Again, that was Joe Hauser of the Montana Vortex. Go out to the Montana Vortex. Be one of those 300 people. Stand up in this crazy room with the balancing broom and see time bend. Along with hairy Sasquatch arms. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm dog tired. Off to my little dream world. But before I go, remember, rate, review... Say hello, write to strangebrowradio at gmail.com and subscribe. Go on iTunes and hit subscribe. It's also on Podbean and soon YouTube and don't forget Patreon. Oh yes, it's coming, coming. Thanks again, folks. I'm out. See you in the trees.